OK. Watch. This Watch is A. There you go. See, it worked. Yeah. Yeah, I was having what? trouble with, with Android the other day. So that's sick. OK. OK, I'm down. OK. So very, very quickly, what is an API? Like, what does it stand for? <laughs> what is it? Um, in terms of, like, like, a basic definition of it? OK, so if a random person just came up to you around the same age as you, they understand the world, they understand the internet, and they ask you, yeah. what's an API? What OK, this is, a, this is actually uh, a, an example I've heard of, and I think it's great. So imagine you go to a restaurant, right? Yeah. And you want to order a steak, right? Okay. You don't go to the kitchen and ask for the steak. You ask the waiter or the server, right? And so you Yo. say, server, I want a steak. And you don't care how this how the steak gets to you, right? You don't care about what they're doing with it. You don't care what how they kill to get the steak, right? So the server says, Okay, I'll get you the steak. The server goes to the back end, the kitchen, and says, Yo, this dude wants a steak, I want you to make it. And then they bring that stick back to you, and then it's served to you. So that's what an API is. You make a request for something, doesn't matter what it is, and some service does it for you, and you don't care how it does it. Yo, that is literally the best explanation we've ever yeah. had. I saw this on a YouTube video, and I was like, what? Yeah, so that's 100% exactly correct. OK, so I'll, I'll find that YouTube video, and I have, to, I have to link it to this. OK, yes, you have to link it. Yeah. Okay. OK, so wicked. So that is basically an api okay yeah and so an api obviously we're going to convert it to like more technical terms we're not going to be actually working in the kitchen but it's the same concept <laughs> it's literally the exact same concept yeah so um so before we were setting it up on google cloud so i thought it yeah. would be much easier if i just did it on my computer because then okay. i have more control over everything and we can always like do another video or like um or like transfer everything to the Google Cloud uh, virtual machine. But for now, yeah. I think it's way easier to, to work like locally, especially because I was, I was building that, uh, that Flutter app locally as well. OK, OK, let's see that. OK, so let me share. Um, so I'm going to share my screen um, of the Flutter app first for a second. So do you see this? Yeah, I see that. I see it. So this is the Flutter app that we built. Uh, it's literally just the 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 start startup name um, generator app that was kind of the. Uh, is this uh, Android Studio? On the tutorial, yeah, this is Android Studio. It looks pretty nice, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. Because um, I don't wait. You're using uh, VS Studio or VS Code? Yeah, I'm using VS Code. So. But it doesn't have the emulator, right? It does have emulators, yeah. On the very bottom of VS Code, I can click on devices, and I can click on an iOS, an Android device, or a web. Oh, OK. That's cool. Yeah. OK. So it, ha it uh, has a good, uh, it has all the other proper f Flutter um, uh, sort of like requirements <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, cool. So, um, so I literally just followed like the tutorial on the flutter.dev website. Um, yeah. and I, uh, I was able to make this app. So basically what it does is you can scroll through this like infinity list yeah. of, of names that it just automatically creates based on two, two random words. And yeah. then, um, so the scroll is working like infinity scroll. And then the oh. other thing I was able to do is, um, add icons on the right of each, of each kind of row. And uh, if I click on the row, then the icon changes. You see that? Yeah. So this is your. Are these your own custom icons you made, or yeah, so, do they come no. with? No. So um, the entire Flutter library has like a bunch of built-in widgets. Okay? okay. And the icon library is one of those like like libraries within the widgets, and yeah. um, there's a bunch of icons associated to that. So I um, on the Flutter Dev website it gives me a list of icons that I could potentially use. So I just okay. searched, like, I just went through and I found, like, this one that looked funny, the baby one. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it just looked really funny. It was, like, a bald baby. It kind of, <laughs> kind of looks like a monkey, too. I don't know. And uh, and then so 
so I got that one, and then, and then I think the one that was close by to, by to there was like a um, a stroller. So, yeah. So I just chose that, but but basically there's two um, kind of states to this uh, to each of these rows. The first state yeah. is like the selected, and then the sorry, the first state is the unselected, and then the second state is the selected. Yeah. Right, and so you can kind of go through and like select and unselect different items. Yeah. Um, so I was able to do that, and then uh, the the kind of last step within the tutorial um, teaches you uh, how to take all of the items that you selected, right, mm -hmm. and push them into a new page. So by clicking on this, I can see exactly which um, items are saved as like the selected. Yeah. Right save suggestions so all of this um like i'm completely brand new to flutter they're using a completely new programming language called dart i've never used any of this stuff um yeah and and so i was just basically trying to get through the tutorial itself and and yeah. while i was going through it i honestly i didn't understand most of what i was doing yeah same um, but in the end, I was like, okay, this kind of makes sense. This kind of makes sense. This kind of makes sense. And then I started looking at um, some of the the syntax uh, that Flutter uses, and then like kind of searching that within the the Flutter docs. And then I understood yeah. a little bit more and a little bit more. So I think okay. I have a relatively decent understanding of how this app works now, and okay. uh, and how the new pages are formed and and that type of thing. So I I kind of get all of this right now. Okay. So so this is the app that I created on Flutter. And obviously, we're not using any APIs. We're not using any like third-party stuff uh, other than like the libraries associated to Flutter, So, um, which is just like the automatic uh, random generator for words. But we're not actually hitting any databases or anything like that right now. OK. So um, like, were you able to get the, to this as well? Yeah, but I kept it as the default hearts with the unfilled and the filled. Oh hearts. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, and let me just. Uh, I'm gonna share the um, the the tutorial that I used as well for a second, just to go through it. Um, okay. So this is um, the link that I used to kind of go through all the all the tutorials for this. Um. So I think it was just in the samples. Oops, sorry, not samples, and getting started. OK. And then I kind of just followed this along. So I'm using a Mac, so I just did the Mac install. And then I set up um, uh, the Android Studio application on my Mac. Yeah. And it installed like simulators using Xcode, and then also um, the simulators for like this pixel device that was on on uh, the uh, Android Studio. And then I kind of just went along with the steps and it told me like, oh, okay, this is the this is how you first create your first app. Yeah. You also have instructions for three different um, editors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Android, yeah. VS Code, and Emacs. Yeah, you're using VS Code and there's also like, you can also, yeah, Emacs. So yeah, exactly. So you're using this, right? Yeah, so I'm just using the Android Studio, which was the one that, um, like, they basically built themselves. But yeah. um, but you obviously had no issue with using VS Code either. So, yeah, you, you could totally use both. So, um, so speaking about uh, APIs, uh, yeah. what I did was I used Loopback to create the API. Okay. And um, basically, it's a Node.js kind of API builder. Um, mm -hmm. And it uses TypeScript framework to build like these APIs and, and microservices. So, okay. um, so let me show you how quickly I'm able to create an API. Okay. All right, let's do this. Okay, so uh, you can obviously go to the docs and see um, how to get started again. So the main thing you need is Node.js on your computer. And then you basically just need to install this node package, um, loopback CLI. OK. So as soon as you do that, you can start building your API right away. Um, I've already installed like the node package, and I already have in node installed. So okay. I'm, I'm going to start with this step.
but um, I'm going to switch back over to um, the terminal. All right. And then we can get started on making the app itself or making the um, I'm making the uh, you know what I'm talking about. What am I talking about? Yeah, you're, you're making the application. <laughs> the API, the API. Whatever. <laughs> See, even you didn't know. Um, all right. So I'm in my terminal here. OK. Uh, yeah. Whoops. Whoops. That looks weird. I can see my stuff in the background. Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just move this away. All right. So um, I just have to run LB for an app to start okay. uh, start like the whole process. And you can see like you basically have to do zero coding to make this API. OK, so what do you yeah, want to call it? Yeah, it? it does all that stuff for you. Yeah, so I, I've already made an API in the background that I want to use with Flutter. So for this purposes, we're just going to create like a random API. So okay. what do you want to call it? It's just called, it's called all, all the default stuff. Sites? All right. I'll go find sites. You know, you're not actually using this one you said, right? I'm not using it. OK, so sites yeah, app. So. This is a sites app API. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to, the root directory, the default is going to be sites API. So it's going to create this folder where, wherever I am. Uh -huh. um, it's going to use this application class name. And then I'm going to keep these defaults kind of selected. I'm not changing okay. anything. Right, so it right. enables all of them? Which, yeah. one you, which one are you selecting? Like, like basically, there's options here. It says space to select A to t toggle all and I to invert selection. Literally, everything is selected right now. So I haven't changed anything. OK. So like, it doesn't matter what I select, because it's going to select all of them. Um, yarn is available. So I'm going to say no, because I don't want to use the yarn. I don't even know what that is. Okay, I was just gonna ask you what that was. <laughs> I think it's a it's another package manager, but um, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. So this is gonna take a second to install. So it's basically setting up your entire API right now. <coughs> okay. Um, okay, done. So now I'm gonna CD into the directory that was just created. The sites API, okay. okay. And let's just run it just to see like what we have right now. So I'm going to run um, npm start. Yep. And, and it looks like um, it's sharing something right now. So I'm going to open a browser to that URL. So localhost post port 3000. OK, let's see it. OK, so localhost uh, 3000. Uh, let me just share my tab here. Um, nope. Oh, okay. Is this what I'm supposed to see? 2000. Okay, okay, now I see it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so we see Sites API version 1.0, this was completely default. Like I haven't changed a single thing, right? OK. So I'm going to go into the Explorer just to see kind of what we have here. OK? So, so you have, have only one API call, it looks like. Yeah, so this is an endpoint. Uh, we haven't created like any control. We haven't done anything, right? So this is kind of what came out of the box. And yeah. it just lets you it just lets you ping the, the API to see like if something's there, right? OK. And so it's just saying that, OK, yeah, something is here. Like, I'm pinging it. I just executed it on the ping. And and it looks like there was a 200 code, which is good. Um, and it just responded with hello from, from loopback. It's like their default kind of, this is working. So if you actually go to that, will it open up a screen that just says hello from loopback? No, it won't open a screen, because we don't have any uh, UI functionality right now. It's just an API. Like, it's literally just data. So if you go to if you go to localhost three thousand slash ping, it'll bring up this page. Like it should just bring up the response body, like as as pure text. Let's try it. Yeah, let's see. It. I'm gonna open up a new tab, 
and go to local port 3000 slash ping. Yeah. yeah. So see? Okay, good. So we see something. Yeah, so this is all you get right now because this is all okay. we've created. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back over to um, uh, to the terminal. And so we're going to add a little bit more functionality here. Okay, excellent. So um, uh, can you see? Yeah. Can we make it render just a simple, can we make it render the simple page but uh, friendlier? Uh, so, or what so, did you have in mind? Yeah, so I wanted to I wanted to make it so that Flutter read the data from the API, and then put it on the way on the mobile app. All right, that sounds a lot cooler. All right, yeah, yeah. That. So I've never done that before, so it might completely mess it up. But I did like a lot of research on it, and I wrote down like like the the code and the syntax that we have to use, and the libraries and the dependencies we have to use. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see that. Okay, so anyways, um, let's just do the next couple of steps to, to, to set up this API. All right. So, so we basically just have our ping endpoint right now, right? Yep. So, um, so what we want to do is, um, is create uh, a few things. So there's a couple of things in loopback that they've defined. So one of the major things is something called a model. And the model is um, is what would set up uh, what would set up what you want the database to store within your API. So Example? I don't know if I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not explaining that correctly. So um, because model is a folder and certain things go in that folder. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's good. But uh, because we're not creating um, a specific API, we just said sites dash API. We um, we didn't like define what we're trying to create here. So let's let's just create. So we're calling it sites API. So let's yeah. call it. Um, so let's say this API is uh, is for a list of websites. Okay. 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 So in that in that case, um, a model. We need to create a model for a website. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? You're creating a model for a website. So when you say model for a website, what do you mean, like a template for a website? Yeah, we're creating we're creating like the data for a website. Whatever data belongs to okay. a website. So okay. so this API will be for for sites. So so I'm gonna go lb4 model. Yeah. Okay, and that's how you would create a model. Okay, and then I'm gonna name the the model class um, uh, uh, site. Okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna use an entity, um, and I'm, I don't want additional freeform properties. And then so these are the, these are the property names. So what does the site have as a property? As a header. As a no, body. no. So. So yeah, it has all that within the code, but so uh, in this example, I'm gonna say things like the URL, it has a URL, right? It has maybe a title, right? Okay. So things like that. URL, so, like, title. I'm content. literally making like a database of sites, like maybe like a bookmark, like a bookmarks have like some of these things, right? Okay. So we don't need like all the, all the code associated to like websites. We just wanna show a list of sites. So, um, Obviously, you just see the URL then. Yeah, and it also has maybe a title, right? So let's say yeah. title, um, and it's a string. Okay. Um, and is the string the ID property? No. No, the URL should be the ID property, right? I think ID will have its own property. Um, oh, so you're going to make a, your own ID tag too. Okay. Yeah, so let's say it is required. Um, okay, so that's good. Uh, we have now URL, uh, and it's going to also be a string. Um, and no, and yes. Um, and then maybe we can create an ID. Uh, we can make it a string. We can make that yes. Why do you make the ID a string? Um, just in case if like, uh, like whatever software you're using to generate the ID number, or uh, if it's doing it automatically, then sometimes it'll add, it'll add letters and numbers. Okay. 
Okay, so we have um, an ID, we have a URL, and we have a title. I think that's good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. So I'm going to hit enter just to continue. Okay, so now we have um, a model created. So the next thing we need to do is have a somewhere to store this information, right? We need like a data store. Okay. So LB4 um, or data source, sorry. We need a data source. So I'm going to do LB4 data source. And then data source name, I'm going to just call it DB. And then, okay. so this, this is really important depending on how you set up your API. You can se select like a bunch of different kind of databases. So like if you're running like a MongoDB database, you're, if you're running a MySQL database, like yeah. basically any of these options you can, you can select and, uh, and then it'll, it'll frame your API accordingly. But in this okay. case, I'm, only going to use in memory db which is the fastest easiest way to set it up okay so in memory db so does that yeah. mean that as soon as you exit the api it's get, the db gets wiped uh i guess so actually i don't know i haven't tried that okay um i don't i don't think so i think if you just delete the um the file or folder associated to the um the in memory db then it gets wiped I would assume in memory means that it's it's hosted in RAM, and once you shut your computer off, it's, it's wiped. Yeah, that might be right. I actually haven't tried it. Um, okay. So okay, so this uh, I'm gonna just hit enter as the defaults, and and that's it. So I've set up my my data sources now, um, and okay. now I have to associate the data source to my model, um, and and the way you do that is you do LB4 repository. Repository. You'll see what I mean in a second. Okay. So I'm just going to select the default here, the DB data source, which is what we just okay. created. And then the, the, the only one model that we want to generate the repository for is the site. So I'm going to hit space on site to okay. enable that. And then I'm going to use the default CRUD, CRUD repository, which is just create, um, read, uh, edit, uh, sorry, update, update. And, uh, and delete. Yeah. And that's it. So that's all I needed to do the, for the repository. And then the last thing I'm going to do is create a controller. And the controller has like all the logic associated to your API. So things like posts and gets and patches and deletes. And it's going to do okay. it all for you anyways. So I'm okay. going to do the same thing, LB4 controller. And then I can name this... Um, site and okay and i'm gonna i don't want an empty controller i want it to build the rest controller with crud function so it'll it'll automatically generate all the crud functions for me so like the get and the post all, all those okay Makes sense. and and then again i'm going to use the 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 site model for that and the site repository which we just created um and then what is the name of the id property so id which we created um, and it's a string um, is the IE omitted? No. Uh, what is the base? So we'll just say slash sites, which is fine. Okay. And that's it. Done. Okay. So now let's okay. run npm start on this. And let's see in our browser now um, what we get. So I'm going to stop sharing this and share the um, the tab. I suspect that you'll get more API calls. You should yeah. get all of the... All the crud ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if I just That's go back my, to uh, it, so we go to the Explorer. And yeah, yeah, so exactly. Do. Okay, excellent. So we now we have the site controller, which has like all these other calls now. Okay. So if we go to, um, if we go to slash sites, for example, um, in yeah. a new, uh, in a new browser. So this is this is slash ping still, but if I change this to slash sites, yeah, and we'll have an empty list, right? Because we have nothing in there. Mm, yeah, okay, makes that, that makes sense. So I'm going to switch back over to this tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the post right here. Yeah. And I'm going to try it out. So so they give you an example of how to use it. So basically, these are the these are the um, properties we created for our model, right? We created title, URL, and ID. We did. Don't you remember? Yeah, we did. <laughs> Um, 
And so let's try it out. So uh, let's put in like some stuff in here. So let's say uh, title TechieCast. Okay. URL is um, techiecast.com. Okay. And then the ID is automatically generated. So I'm just going to keep it empty. Oh, right, right. right. Okay. Let's see. So uh, let's execute this and let's see what happens. So, okay, good. We got a 200 code. So that's good. Um, and it looks like it generated this um, this in our in our API database. Okay, so if we okay. switch if we switch back over to the other tab, um, yeah. this is this is slash sites. So I'm going to refresh this page. So there you go. Now we have some data in our database. Now that's neat. That's neat. Yeah. So okay, that that's was neat. like a super quick way of creating a database. And obviously, there's like other functions you can add. Like you can you can do filters. Like you can do like updates, and you can do deletes. And yeah, there's all those all those things are already built into the sites controller. Okay? Yeah. But I just wanted to show that the API was working. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, if I what wanted to render a page, do I go to the controller? How do I do that? Do I go to the controller folder and then? Yeah, so it depends. It depends on what you're trying to do and which kind of application you're using alongside the API. Right? I want so, to show the same data but nicer. Yeah, so you have to create like an HTML or like a web app or like a mobile app, something that yeah. reads the API data, and that's what we're gonna do on Flutter right now. Okay. Um, because right now, yeah, it's just like pure content or pure data. Yeah. Um, and so this is how all applications generally work in in terms of getting getting external data like it's 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 the same example like going into the back of the kitchen and making that order yeah which is a sick example by the way <laughs> yeah lucky i found i found that youtube video um so so actually before i move on um yep. so i created a uh, a sample of um api prior to this because i wanted okay. to use it for the flutter app so what I wanted to do, so you saw the Flutter app. It basically lets you um, just click on a, a single row item, and then like it kind of changes the icon. And then you also have a saved, uh, like a saved saved kind of page that shows yeah. you what you clicked on. So that it, it saves like what you had. Yeah, so yeah. I think that we can convert that into a to do list fairly easily because it's basically the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. We would just yeah, need to change the icon, and then you click on them, and it goes to your list. You mean like that? Yeah, exactly. We just we just need to change them, maybe the list, right? And then that 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 second page becomes maybe the completed list. I don't know. Okay. Um, so so what I did was I created a, a to dos like API. Yeah. Using the same kind of concept. So I'm gonna just switch over to that and and start it and. Uh, okay. Let me just let me share um, that specific tab so you see uh, what I created. Um, That's funny. So where were we? I was showing you this. The yeah, Explorer, you showed right? me this. Yeah. So so yeah, I created the exact same thing. I created a to do controller, right? Yeah. Um, but then I also created a couple to do items just to test it. Um, okay. And, Let's see. And, here, like I'll I'll share the screen. So I'm gonna just change sites to to dos. Okay. To to dos. To do. I think there's an S at the end. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Actually, the in memory does erase because I created some stuff. You created this yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. So like it and looks then you like you turned off your laptop and then. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. so I'm gonna have to go back and just create. Um, uh, I'm gonna have to create the thing again, right? That's okay. Yeah, that's a completely okay. Yeah. So, um, if I go to get, I just want to make sure. Yeah, there's nothing in here. Yeah, okay. Um, so, but what I did was I created a couple uh, additional parameters in this. Okay. So, um, you can see the screen, right? Yeah, I can see it. Brian, are you okay? Huh? Are you okay? Sorry. 
no, no, no. she she dropped uh, something. Oh. Um, so uh, in the post area, so the to do's. So yeah. you can see there's an ID, which is the normal thing, but then there's also a title, and then there's a description, and then there's a location that I included. Maybe in the future we want to show like where this to do item has to be oh. done. I also yeah, included yeah. a That's date, smart. like a due date, right? And then I also created a is complete um, property and uh, with a like a boolean option. It defaults to true. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I That's think me. I, <laughs> I don't think I set a default and I think it automatically set to Drew. So, okay, um, okay. but yeah, yeah. So like this is more along the lines of what a to-do item would be, right? Like it usually has a date associated to it. Maybe it could have a location. If you um, have to do a, a specific item at a specific location, then yeah. Yeah, yeah, sense. exactly. So I'm gonna go try it out and then I can put in some information in here. So ID, I'm gonna keep blank, but um, I don't know what should I make this type. Wash dishes. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Uh, wash. Turn on dishwasher. <laughs> yeah. Turn on dishwasher. I'm sorry, just kidding you. Oh, wife is not. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna right put behind in my... me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, the location, uh, I'm not going to put in anything. So I, I only made the ID and the title um, yeah. as required. Okay. So all this stuff is not required. So I'm not going to put anything in for the rest of them. I'm just going to leave it as a default. Okay. And execute. All right. Okay, cool. So it looks like it created it. There was a 200 code. Um, and I'm going to just switch over to this tab and refresh this uh, slash to do's and see yeah. if it's there. Cool. Okay, so it's there. Okay, so um, so we want to use this in Flutter now. Um, yeah. And so the way I was kind of going about it was uh, using this tutorial here um, to to figure out how to include um, like a API request within Flutter. So okay. this is this is some documentation I found on the Flutter website, um, and it's basically saying to use this HTTP package right. to um, to get that information from the API. And so I've been following this um, to kind of set it up. And so uh, I deleted it from the Flutter app because that's kind of where we left off. And yeah. and so I thought we could go through this example and include it there. Okay, that's cool. So before I do that, so they're using this. Um, API call, this JSON yeah. placeholder. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So I'm, I'm just gonna open it in a new tab, and yeah. um, and uh, and see like what what it gives us. Okay. Um, it says waiting. I was having an issue with this website too. It took a while to load. I think a lot of people use it. So uh, I'll come back to it in a second when it's done loading. Sure. But um, I'm gonna switch back over to Flutter. Oh, there it is. Oh, is there? Okay, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so this is giving us some information, right? It's hitting some API, and this yeah. is the information it's giving us back. It's like a stand, okay. it's like a placeholder almost kind of data. Yeah. But it's giving us something. So we can use their, <clears throat> uh, like the API in their example, or we can use ours is the point. So I think we should just okay. use ours, knowing that we know what our placeholders are. Yeah, right? like, exactly. And, and that one, they had like user ID, ID, and something else. But yeah. we know what ours are. So, um, so I'm going to switch over to um, uh, the Android Studio again. Okay. And then we can start. Um, we can start making this. What What do you think of this so far? By the way, I think it's really cool that uh, you can use your own. Uh, you can create your own API, and then mm -hmm. integrate that with a Flutter app you just made, literally, I think, yesterday or the day before. Yeah, yeah. Without knowing too much about how, how it actually works. Yeah, so I think I know like enough about how it works now. Yeah. Uh, to be able to do this because like I went through the example of creating that initial part, yeah. and then like I went through it like over and over again to kind of understand like where things were and why mm -hmm. it was created that way, and yeah. so that's why I'm able to do it this way, or that's why I'm able to kind of add some of this stuff. So, yeah. um. From the tutorial, it uh, it told me I need to add the HTTP package 
And so that's okay. what I did. So you have to go into the pub spec um, YAML file. You, you can see this, this screen, right? Yeah. So uh, I just added the latest version of HTTP. Yeah. Underneath that English words. Like remember you, you probably had to add English words. Um, yeah. When you, when you did that sample app. So I'm yeah. just adding like HTTP as, an, as a separate package. And then I ran pub get to get okay. the, to get the the reference dependencies, um, and then I added these lines. So I added the async um, and convert um, yeah. and the package HTTP dot dart. Does it autofill those lines for you when you run a pub get, or do you have to no, add those lines? No, I had to add. I had to add them. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So that's kind of all you have to do for that first step. And then the next step is to make a network request. So um, so according to the tutorial, it's saying to use like that um, that URL that they have. So I'm going to copy and paste the code from there, but I'm going to change it. Okay. So I'm just going to add it here. So this is what they have on their tutorial. Yeah. But what I'm going to use is instead of fetch album, so it's creating a function here. So I'm going to say fetch uh, to do. Okay. And then instead of the get on um, on this, I'm gonna make this uh, colon backslash backslash local host for three thousand okay, cool. slash to dos. That should give me the list of to dos. Okay. And actually, um, I want to do slash one because. Uh, because that's how they set it up as well. They had the album slash one because they only wanted one. So in this case, I'm going to get the first to do. I only have one right now, but I'm just to try and we can test out yeah, more later. Because yeah. uh, I want to see if I can get as one to one as possible with their example, but just with our API. Makes sense. So so we're using the HTTP package we just installed and then the dot get, which is like one of the it's a get API. Request. Yeah, that's one of the controller endpoints that we that was created for us. Yeah, and we're just using our our API instead. Yeah. Okay, and then what it says to do is we need to create an album class. So in our case, we're going to create a to do class. Okay. So I'm again I'm gonna copy and paste this um, snippet of code and then change it uh, to what we need. So I just okay. copied like lines sixteen to thirty. Yeah, and I'm gonna change this to to do. So we're gonna create a to do class, and then yeah. instead of these items, we're gonna change them depending on what we need. So we have a string for our ID. Yeah, and then we have a um, uh, a string for our title. Yeah, um, and then we have a uh, what else do we have? URL, right? No, no, this is the, that was the sites. What do we have for to do? Oh, right. No, I, I, I don't know what else you put that's, that's necessary. Or do you have to put all, you have to put all of them, I'm assuming. I don't think we have to put all of them. We have to put the ones that we want to use. So uh, I guess we can use the string and the um, description. Let's just use these three for now. And we can add more later. Yeah. Actually, the only, the only thing that was required for you, I think, was the ID and title, right? Yeah, that's true. So let's get rid of the description. Yeah. So um, I'm going to call this to do. And then we just need this dot ID uh, and this dot title. Yeah, yeah, exactly. OK. So and then we're going to change this from album to to do. And then so what it gives us is JSON content, JSON data. So yeah. we're going to keep this the same then because the API is giving us JSON content, uh, JSON data anyways. And okay. we're going to return, um, we're going to return just the JSON content for each of the ID and the titles. Okay, this is cool. Okay, so that was all we needed for creating that class. So we created the to do class, uh, and yeah. we defined all the variables and, um, and the conversion from uh, JSON into some readable dynamic JSON. Yeah. Now um, we have to change the my app in the uh, my yeah, app not, class, right? Not yet. There's still uh, one more thing or two more things <clears throat> we need to do from um, the tutorial that I'm following here. 
So I'm going to copy this in. So it says to, uh, we need to convert the HTTP response to an album. Um, so, so what I'm going to do is copy and paste that in here and show you. So uh, I just copy and paste that. So um, what it's doing is it is fetching the album asynchronously, and then it's awaiting the response from this uh, this API call. Um, and then if it's good, it'll present a 200 code. But if it's bad, then oh, it'll okay. give like some like an error. So we just need like some like kind of error testing proof um, in okay. there. Okay. So and we're referencing the album class. So instead of album, we're referencing to do. Do yeah. Um, and then this is again another uh, function that was created. So we're going to call it fetch to do. Okay. To do. Um, and then the uh, the URL that we're going to use is the um, I the uh, the URL of our um, yeah. API. <clears throat> thousand to do's slash one. Okay. okay. And the code should be good. And then we can just say fail to load to do. There's one thing you need to change. Oh, yeah. What's that? The return oh, statement. Yeah. yeah. Sketch. Okay. Okay. That looks. Looks pretty good. Okay. So, um, so now it says we have to use <clears throat> the 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 fetch. The fetch. You have to the create the fetch class or the fetch function, right? Yeah, we have to create the fetch function, but we have to create it within um, something. So, so hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste this, but this is not what we're gonna use. So okay. I just copy and pasted lines 45, 44 to fifty one. Okay. So basically oh. what they're saying is um, you have to include this, like this highlighted area within yeah. your your app state. Okay. And and you have to reference your future in your app state. But because we already have our, um, our kind of app state uh, created like elsewhere, I think we should include this in there because we don't like we don't need to. Like so, Wait, basically, what, yeah. What what have you made the my app state class? So I haven't made the my app state class, but there's a, a different class here called the random word state class. Oh, so you're gonna extend is, that. You're gonna place yeah, that code in there. Exactly, because it's being run like anyways. So I was gonna include uh, it here, or or do you think I should just remove all of this and then add it? Wait, go 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 back up to see what that code is. So, so this extends the my app. Yeah. This extends my app. Yeah, Yours, exactly. You want to paste it to where it extends random word state. So it's extending di different classes. Yeah. What do you think? You, you could try it. Um, if it doesn't work for one, we could try it with the other. It, it should work. So um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this here. And I'm going to delete this now. OK. Need that. And then I'm going to put it into, uh, into here. I'll put it into the top just so that we can see it easily. OK. Um, and so it's going to be future to do and future to do. Um, Okay. So, okay. so what we're, so what this is saying is essentially on on the initial initialization of this random word state class, yeah. um, it should it should run the fetch to do. But fetch to do doesn't exist yet. The fetch to do it yeah, does it exists up here. Fetch to do fetch to do. Right here, 30. And why is it saying that's an error? Uh, I don't know. Value, a value of type future response can't be assigned to a variable of type future to do. Try changing the type of the variable or casting right hand type to future to do. I'm not really sure what that means.
Um, I'm not really sure what that means, but let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means either. Well, we haven't There's something fishy going on though, for sure. We haven't uh, we haven't actually built like we haven't used the the build widget for any of this stuff yet, so we have to do that still. So Maybe it'll resolve have, itself afterwards. Yeah, that, okay. that might be the reason why it's erroring out. So yeah, so that was the last step. The last step is to be able to display the data. You have we have to use the build function or the build widget. Okay. So I'm gonna copy that um, snippet in here and show you what I mean by that. Um, so a piece of line fifty nine. Whoa, that was not. I want the. Um, I wanted to indent and do all the indentation. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, right? Yeah. Um, reformat. What the heck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I. I don't think this code wants to play ball. But I don't get it. How come it's not? What? Okay, I don't know. It might be faster ju ju just individually, like yeah. space them out now. Yeah, as, as annoying as that is. Does spacing even matter that much in Dart? Do you know? Um, I have no idea. Let me have it. If you save it, will it will it automatically do the indentations for you? Uh, I don't know. Idea. Um. If... Okay, that's how it should okay. be, but yeah, uh, all the squiggly lines is throwing me off. Yeah, 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 that's annoying. Okay, so I think maybe it's because it's album everywhere still. Okay. So I'm going to change all this stuff to to do. Okay, and where, where's this, where's this code supposed to go? So this is this is what actually displays the data or displays the content for the uh, on the Flutter app. Okay, but wh where is this code supposed to be? Is it supposed to be embedded in some other function or class or? So it's supposed to be within um, within the body. So hold on, let me just share this tab again. Sure. Presenting. You see this? Yeah, I see that. So um, this is the tutorial I was using. So this was the last step. So to, to display the data on the screen, use the future builder widget. The future yeah. builder widget comes with Flutter and makes it easy to work with asynchronous data sources. You must provide two parameters, the future you want to work with, in this case, the fetch uh, the fetch album function, a builder yeah. function that tells Flutter what to render depending on the state of the future, loading success or error. Um, and then uh, note that snapshot has data um, only returns true when the snapshot uh, contains a non-none data value. This is why the fetch album function should throw an exception even if the case of a 404 not found response. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah. So this is the code, but so this is the actual displaying of um, whatever data comes from back from the IP uh, API, and yeah. So they have like a complete example based on what we did. Yeah. We put it together like nicely. So, so basically, the first thing we have to run is the fetch uh, album or the fetch to dos async. Yeah. Um, and that kind of initializes the the get response on on the API. So it either tells you whether or not it's um, uh, it's a 200 code. Um, and okay. then 
and then it's creating like uh, the entire album class and it's defining like uh, all the properties involved with it uh, yeah and then we get into like the main app itself so like we have most of the stuff running already in our existing app right but it's fetching words from a random word list yeah that's what ours is doing so um so you have to remove you have to remove all that stuff so I don't think we need to remove it just yet. I, I was planning on just adding it on top of it and then we can figure out how to remove it afterwards. I, I just wanna, uh, I wanna move one step at a time so we kind of understand where we where we came from. And if we remove too much, then I feel like we'll get lost. Or if we change too much, I think we'll get lost. Okay. Um, so, so where was I? Okay, so yeah, so this, my, my app state um, is, uh is is basically the exact same thing as um the the class my app right because it's extending the stateless widget uh from from our app right and it has the exact same stuff it has like the theme uh it has like the title all that the material app like all that stuff is is built into this into the widget build with this which is part of the same class yeah um, and we have all this stuff. So we have like the home, the scaffold, the app bar, like all this stuff. So the way they do it is they basically put that future builder in in child within the body. Yeah, so it has to replace the the, the random words functionality. You think so? If you go back to yours, right? What does child have in, in your main app? Yeah, let's see. Because the my app is the main class, and that's what actually calls the random words. The random words, right? Where's uh, where's the my app class? So it's In actually here. it's further down there. Pushing saved. Oh yeah, that's right. It's pushing stuff. Oh, where's no. your this is where's your my app class? To the new app. Um, final. This is this is the uh, the secondary app, right? Or sorry, the second page. No, where, 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 where's your my app class though? It's at the top. I'm just it's at the top. Okay, yeah. Let, let's look at the child of that because that's the main thing. Yeah, there's no child on it. It just says home. Because home random running. words. So it, it's actually calling random words. Yeah. So in random words, where do you see that? So this is random word state, which extends this. Which is random word state, which extends random words. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to have uh, this in here. Okay. So as long as it runs that, it should it should include it in there as well. Um, so there's also this so the build suggestions. So this this is the this is what's actually building the suggestions. Yeah. Um, and running the push saved, yeah. So, so here is um, is where the app uh, UI is being generated, right? Yeah, this is where your this is where the uh, and then it's the running suggestion the is being yeah. built. So, this yeah. is where the lazy list is being built, and also where you click on, then it's being pushed onto the saved list. Sorry, yeah. the saved set. Exactly. So then, do you think that we can? Um, we could add the line right above here. You could try, but I don't know if it's going to work. Yeah. So, um, I just want to go back and see. Yeah. So the the override with um, the fetch album, like basically. Uh, Yeah, this. Yeah, this needs to go somewhere first, though. Um, okay. This. This should go in the my app, not in here, though, right? Because this all I'm, this I'm is doing sure. is I'm not sure to be honest. So all this is doing is this is initializing um, the fetch to do. 
So I'll remove this. So I think it should go in here. Okay. I think. I think it would have been easier if you just uh, copied their code exactly and just replaced the album with to, with to do instead of uh, yeah and of started with Frankenstein. Yeah, no, I know, Frankenstein but 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 uh, but I feel like this is the only way we're gonna learn then, because otherwise we'll just copy and paste the code and then not really know like how how it worked. Uh, this is this is one way to learn, but it seems like a mishmash. Yeah, but that's how well that's what code is, right? Like you have to figure out like like kind of the the series of events. Yeah. Cuz in this way at least we're kind of reverse engineering at the same time. Um all right. So I'm just looking back at the tutorial here. Um It says that we basically don't need the override. Is that what it's saying? This method doesn't override an inherited method. Yeah, I think override is only for in if there's when there the method already exists from the previous class or something, and then you want to overwrite it. Mm -hmm. But because there's no other what in its state method, then there's nothing to override. Okay, like overriding that's... the build methods makes sense because everyone has their own build method. I commented it out. So now it's saying the method in its state isn't defined in in a superclass of my of my app. Yeah, you wrote super. Um so yeah. I don't know what that means, but I, I copied it in wrong actually. So I'm gonna remove this again. So what they use is um, they actually uh, extend my app into another class. So they actually have it like this um, uh, class and then underscore my app state extends my app state. I, yeah, exactly. In here is where they have um, this stuff. Now we're not getting any errors. OK. Okay. Um, OK, so that's good. We're not getting any errors there. Um, and then within that same kind of area is, is where the override comes for the, the build widget. So uh, I'm just going to copy this entire thing in here, and then we can remove. So um, I'm going to get rid of this for now. Something is wrong with that anyways. So basically, the only thing we added now is the my state extends uh, the state my app. And yeah. then uh, in here, how come my app is, is highlighted? My app doesn't extend stateful widget. Hmm? My app extends the stateless widget. Oh, yeah, there's this. There's a line just above that said, um, it uh, it extends the stateless widget. Missing concrete implementation of state dot build. Are you actually following this along, or? Yeah, yeah, I'm following this along. So I haven't I haven't created a build yet. So, uh, in that case, okay. Add this to this app state widget. Oops. Um, the override. Okay. Just... Okay. Yeah, there shouldn't be any more errors there. 
My app is already defined. All right. Okay. I'll just remove all this stuff for now then. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to comment out, uh, like basically our entire old app. <laughs> so basically we, you're copying the new, the new stuff in yeah. and removing all the old stuff. Yeah, basically. Okay. So the entire app is, is commented out except for what we have here. Okay, because okay, yeah, there's 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 duplicates of my app, which was confusing me, and I guess that's not allowed. No, it was confusing the machine, which wasn't allowed. <laughs> yeah, you're allowed to be as confused as much as possible. Once you confuse the machine, it's a no no. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm gonna change all these apps. Uh, albums to to do's now so to do do okay is that it that if you scroll down or up uh maybe, maybe do a command f to see if there's any more albums in case you missed any album no, no there's not I don't think it's case sensitive. Uh, there's an error with that fetch to do. What's up with that? Yeah, error? yeah, no. I'm just looking at the order and making sure I have everything right. Um, so the order should be the the fetch async should be the first kind of uh widget. So this should actually be the first thing. Okay. I guess at the very top. Yeah, like basically right after. Um, the import. Okay. Um, and then the class is defined. Um, the class is defined. And then this is still needed here. Um, and then, yeah, and then this goes. Okay. I don't know what happened to this line then. Uh, Which line? I, this uh, fetch to do return. This was not used at all. But I guess, yeah, it makes sense because the async is doing the same thing. Okay. Because Yeah, like I copied it from the tutorial because they were they were teaching you about it. But they actually, they use it in the, uh, the await. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay, so that's kind of it. Let's see. I'm going to save that and let's see. Um, did it give me an error? I don't know if this is an error from before or after. I'm just going to run it and see what happens. All right, let's see. Oh, nice. Suck it, error. Connection refused. That's weird. I'm going to just make sure that something comes up in this link. Yeah, a good idea. <laughs> It'd be funny if it was just that error. No, it's something is coming up. Socket error port four three four eight three four four. What do you think that means? Uh, I'm not sure. OS error. Socket extension connection refused. So the the emu the simulated phone opened up its port 48344 and tried to connect to your machine, but there's an error when it's opened up its own port. I have no idea. You think that makes a difference? Oh, it did something different. Oh. This is the same, right? Yeah, but you got a different line when, uh, in the console. 
You loaded one of 577 libraries. Um, What's uh, the actual IP address of your machine? Uh, I, I don't know, but I'm on the same computer, so it, it, this should work anyways. I don't, I don't think it has to do with this, because if, if this wasn't working, then we, we would get this fail to lo load to do error. Right? It's, it's They're on a bogus IP address. Then it, it, it should show that then, right? Oh, yeah, true. That has to be a valid one, right? Or no? Yeah, looks fine. Let's see. Let's see if that should. Uh... No. Oh, loading forever. Which means that it didn't work. I should at least show the error, like throw to to do. Maybe it's trying to hit this and like there's nothing there, but it's it's not closed. I'm gonna stop. Oh, is that continuously trying? Yeah, I'm gonna put blocking in. Interesting. Let's see. Oh uh, first I thought I thought it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this new screen. I was like, oh, wow. It changes the background and everything. Yeah, I made that look so cool, right? Yeah. It should, it should show the app on the main screen, right? Uh, Like, what do you mean, which app? Like, so when I did it on the iPhone emulator, mm -hmm. and I went to the main screen, it showed the name of my app on the... Oh. Damn it. Go to the main screen, press the circle at the bottom. Oh, it doesn't show you that. Mm -hmm. Try it on iOS. Will it make a difference? I don't think so. Because I had troubles running it on Android, actually. Really? Yeah, but on iOS, I had, I had no issues. Did you call it health? Did I what? Did you call one of your apps health? Health? No. I think that's um <laughs> I think that's a uh, a default app. Okay, let's do the hot reload so that it loads on the phone then. There we go, there's your app. So it goes on the phone. Oh this is a this is Oh no, that's the first app, sorry. First app was called my app. This one's called to do. Oh, it doesn't, it's not even loading the app. Oh, here, that's why I didn't, I didn't select the right one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Okay. It's still not loading it. Did you do the hot reload again? Run it. I'm gonna stop. stop all. And I'm gonna run it on this. Yeah. Launching on iPhone 11 Pro in debug mode, okay? So, should see the app on the phone. It takes so long to run the Xcode build, eh? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Did you also set it up to try web apps or no? Um, I don't know if I did actually. Okay. Wash this is a. There you go. See, it worked. Yeah, yeah. I was having trouble with, with Android the other day, so that's like okay. Now, if you go to the, can you go to the main screen? It should, the app should appear on your actual phone. On my actual phone? What do you mean? It is on the phone. No, like you should be able to actually. Access oh, here. It. Yeah, there here. it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's 
called the yeah, same thing. Wash dishes. Yeah. Wash dishes. Wash dishes. Yeah. What if you actually go to the to the to do list and add another item? Is that can you do that now and see if it loads on your phone? So um, I can't because because it's only one. Like we don't we have we don't have like a a for loop or anything to kind of iterate through the data. Okay. Okay. We haven't set that up. But like, if I were to create another one, then I could. Um, yeah. But uh, but it's using just the title, so I wonder if we add um, a description? description as well and see what happens. That would, that would be funny to see the description actually. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um. So that's there, but uh, I guess it's returning everything then. No, it's returning only only the title. I think only right? those three. But now, but now you need to hot reload it. No, but I thought it's only returning the title. Yes. Yeah, so see, return text title. So um. Uh. I don't know if you can actually just add a list of there. You try it. Yeah, um, I think you have to do it the way they have it over there. So you have to do dollar sign this, and then include the thing in there, and then go um, put that off. Yeah. Um, Uh, data dot desk. Okay, and another dollar sign, right? Do you need dollar signs for all of them? I'm assuming there. Yeah. So okay, I think we need dollar sign, but then. Uh, Oh, let's just see if that works. Yeah, let's see if that works. Uh, reload. No. Wash dishes plus no. Huh. Um, maybe we don't need this. We can just use a comma. I'll try that. Definitely need that. Yeah, you need something. There's an error there. <laughs> Expect. We need it. Okay. Um, still an error here. I expect it as expect it as an as identifier. Expected an identifier. Yeah, it's just uh it's just a syntax there. Put it all sign in front of that. Try that. Let's try that. Wash okay. dishes now. Hey, tr try just putting the description without the title. Yeah. Are you controlling everything? Yeah. No. I don't know why I'm doing that. I could have just gone like that. Oh. Yeah. String yeah. must be provided to a text widget. The description is a string. That's strange. I guess the what? Where, where is a uh, where snapshot? Where else is snapshot? What? Line two ninety eight. Where the hell is line two ninety eight? Not even a line two ninety eight. Oh, it's in a different file. This is this is annoying. Yeah. 
data can't equal null. Data can't equal null. Where, where's, the, where's the actual description of your um of your uh, thing? Uh, what do you mean? Sorry, where's the when you made the the the, the to do item the wash dishes right? Mm -hmm. Can you go to the website? The actual URL where it's there. Where, sorry, oh where yeah, it is? yeah. I'm looking at it right now. It says like turn on dishwasher so wife is not upset. And that's what's what's the actual title for it? Is it DESC? Yeah, DESC. And it's a string. Okay. Snapshot dot data dot DESC. Where else is snapshot defined? Um, it's not. It's so just uh, it's snapshot. a parameter here. So like, if it has data, then to show the data. What if you remove description? If I put, oh yeah, what if I put that? No, 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 it doesn't do that. I wish there was a way to, but D, dot DESC didn't give an error. Dot ID. Yeah, showing that. One. So that's right, how come it's not showing the desk? So I weird. Know. Go up. Did I miss something somewhere? You maybe you didn't add description everywhere you needed to add it, but you added ID and title everywhere. So desk, desk, I have a comma. JSON. Final string desk. There. This dot desk. It's a string. Right? Am I spelling it wrong yeah. or something? Hmm. Doesn't make any sense, right? This is bizarre. That is bizarre. So when you go to the when you go to the actual API, right? Mm -hmm. The title for description is literally D E S C. Yeah, oh. yeah, it is. Yeah, that's strange. I don't know. It shows the ID. It shows the title. But it doesn't show description. Try no. changing the description. Changing the description. No. I, Maybe uh, that works. I don't know. Turn text. No, it's just, a, it's just a string, like as data. Return text. Can, 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 when you put the description, can you put a, a dollar sign and quotations around snapshot? Um, like this, you mean? Yeah, exactly like the, like the one below it. I'm gonna leave it like this for just this, just to see if this works first. Okay, good idea. Save. Yeah, seems to work. Dishes. Let's change this to desk now. Oh. Was it no. null? It's not null. It's better than an error, but not by much. Yeah. Maybe it's not better than an error, actually. I'm going to stop it and start it again. OK. Fuck. <laughs> it started so quickly. Wait, it's still running. What do you mean? What? What? What is this? It says running Xcode build now, but the app is running here. I don't know. Uh, I, I think it's still, wait for it to I think it's still load. Loaded. Yeah. I'm sure that has data. Uh, Turn on dishwasher so wife is not upset. Yeah, it works. Yeah, so the reason it wasn't working is because we have um, we have the initialization to run on the API, yeah. right? And so we weren't running that um, API call again. Like, it was just kind of saving it in the cache. 
Like we're only running oh. it on the initial load, like the fetch. So when you do a hot reload, it does it didn't actually hit the yeah the URL again. Exactly. Oh, okay. So so now it, everything should be in there because we loaded like we added like description and end title. So now if we change this to title, it should show the title as well. Yeah. Yeah. I should show everything now if you do the commas like you wanted to do before. Yeah, so I don't know how um just a comma there. Comma here and then yeah. another. Then the dollar sign, yeah. And then snapshot dot data dot Yeah. Wash dishes. Turn the dishwasher so it's not upside. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, it pretty cool, right? It wraps around the screen. So yeah, nice. because we haven't changed any like um like UI stuff. But like this is the point. Like this is what APIs do. They they store data and then when you call them, they display them based on where you want them to be displayed. Mm. Yeah. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you. And then like maybe later we can extend this app to make it a little bit nicer and like like make it do some of those actions that we were able to do with the icons. That's what I wanted to do, but um, but yeah, there's obviously a little bit more work required there. Yeah, yeah, there is. But the fact that we got this far is kind of kind of really cool, I think. Yeah, I agree, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think so? No, I agree, I agree, I agree. Are you, are you, do you have a better understanding of um, APIs in general because of this, or or are you like nah? Um. Uh, yeah, I, I would say so. I I would say a better understanding of APIs now. I feel like you're not very impressed. No, no it's not that I'm not impressed. <laughs> Seems like you're not impressed. No, it's not that I'm not impressed. So yeah. I don't know. I'm not not impressed, but I'm not impressed. Does that, does that make sense? No, I, so, I I don't understand why you're not impressed. Uh, why are you impressed? Because we basically created our own API and we were able to display the data that we created from the API on a mobile app, on a native mobile mobile app. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm just, I hate I, you. I just don't get that excited. This is exactly when I came over to your place for dinner and your brother kept pushing these delicacies on me. And I said, yeah, it's okay. I was getting so upset. Oh, my God. Wait, what delicacies? That? No? He was like, hey, you guys had uh, baklava? Oh, okay. And uh, your brother was saying it's, it's uh, made from the guy that made it for the shot of Iran or something like that. Like the same guy. Yeah. Said, okay. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Getting so upset. Wait, but you actually thought it was okay, or like you didn't like it? Yeah, I've, I've had baklava before. It didn't taste any different to me. Oh, uh, okay. It just tasted normal, and I, I generally don't like it that much. So uh, he's gonna upset at that, and then uh, you guys had some other sweets over, and some, and your mom made some food too, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. He's getting upset over my reactions. I would get upset too. You had if you I'm had just zero not, reaction. I'm just not that excited of a person for uh, certain things. But you do get excited. I get excited on the inside. I just don't really show it uh, too much. But you should. You should in those situations. I don't. I don't but but it's not me. It's like uh, I don't know. No, they valued your opinion. That's why they were asking you. Yeah. Okay. If, uh, I feel. I feel. I almost feel bad. I don't think you feel bad. I said almost. Exactly. So I don't actually feel bad, but I almost do. <laughs> Anyways, I think that this was good, and I think that we can definitely extend like our mobile app to do a lot more. Now that yeah, we so that will have be data, exciting once it does more. Yeah, so like now that we have like our own kind of data source, like we can have multiple different controllers, we can have multiple different like models, um, and like. The reason I added the location and the date is because eventually I want to see if we can add like a date picker directly in Flutter. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, and even like um, uh, the you know how it says is complete as a, was a boolean. Yeah. 
I want to yeah. be able to add like a checkbox that like is a checkbox or a, an empty box, right? As yeah. the two icons. And yeah. then um, uh, what was the other thing I added? Uh, location. Oh, yeah. So if we're able to maybe get some um, geolocating or geocoding uh, yeah. built directly into Flutter, then maybe it, it can use the IP address of the user um, to 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 geocode their location and then maybe show the Google map or something, which would be really cool too. Yeah, that'd be cool. It'd be cool to tie, um, to do items to a location, yeah. For example, if you wanted to work out at the gym, you have to be close to a gym. Yeah, or like, yeah, exactly. If you had an item to do, then like maybe it'll give you a notification based on where you are. That'd be cool. Okay, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Like. Yeah, if one of your things was to work out and then it detects that you're close to a gym, it might push the notification to you. That would Yo, be cool. I just thought of a cool, cool game, like based around right. this exact entire thing. Like think of a scavenger hunt, right? Where everyone is in on the same scavenger hunt, but like the items on the scavenger hunt show up based on your location. So like, okay. say like you're all over Toronto and like a bunch of people have this all over Toronto, but depending yeah. on where you are, it'll show you the nearest scavenger hunt items. That would be cool, yeah. That's, that's cool. cool. Yeah. Oh, that's actually really cool. You're going to make it? Well, I think we have some work to do in terms of like figuring out how to um, how to extend what we just built. Because yeah. the only thing we really were able to do is um, talk to our API and, and show some of the data. But that's it, like yeah. in a very simple form. Yeah. I think that's cool in and of itself. But, um, but I think there's definitely a lot more we can do. Yeah, I agree. Okay. You don't seem excited about anything right now, so I'm gonna go because you're you're not excited about any of this. Am I killing your mood? Yes, one hundred percent. Okay, uh, I almost feel bad. You should feel bad. Okay. Why the hell aren't you excited about this? I'm not not excited. I'm just not that as excited. Like I just said, it's really cool, and and it would be cool to build this stuff. What more do you want from me? Do you want me to jump up and down? Yes, yes, jump. <laughs> and right, I'm gonna go. All right, this was good though. I agree. All right, peace, bro. Take care.